Hey, I'm Mark Smorter. I'm Rich Davis. And we're from The Sixth Letter, and we're watching the Chana 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 podcast. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of my podcast. We have a very special guest today joining all the way from UK. We have Richard and Mark of The Sixth Letter. Hi, guys. Hi. Hey, how's it going? How's your morning? How's your morning today? Well, pretty relaxed so far, just easing into it. We're looking forward to doing this. So yeah, all good, all good. Right. Yeah. So uh, before this, you guys were telling me that you're from Derby, right? Uh, <laughs> can you tell me a little bit about your place? <laughs> Derby, it's a pretty heavy, it's a, it's, the middle of England is a pretty heavy industrial sort of place, pretty famous for manufacture and not far away is a really famous uh, town uh, known for beer called Burton on Trent. Uh, so it's pretty industrial. It's pretty sort of working man. You know, nothing too glamorous really happens around here. It's it's pretty part of England, sort of just normal sort of thing, I'd say. Right. So how is the situation now in the UK? Is is life back to normal after after the pandemic? Pretty much, yeah. Like it just seemed to be getting to that point where it's not like nothing ever happened because I think that it was a nightmare that, you know, it will take a long time for us to forget. But um, yeah, things do seem to be getting back to a little bit more normality, which is a relief, you know? Yeah, I mean, all the uh, all gigs and live events are back on again. You don't have to wear a face mask. Um, you just have to show that you've been vaccinated now, but pretty much everybody in the UK that, that needs to be vaccinated has, has been vaccinated. So uh, it, it's pretty much as normal as it could be really right now. Right. So guys, can you introduce yourself and tell me what you do in the band? Yeah, so my name's Mark Mortar. I've always been a, a vocalist and a DJ, and then I transitioned into more production so I, I do all the vocals in the band and I sort of do sort of the synths and the sounds and you know anything that's sort of underneath the main guitars and bass that's me too. Yeah I'm uh, Rich and I play the bass and also manage the band. Right so uh, you can also mention the other guys in the band? Oh, them guys! Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, they can't come to an interview. <laughs> now, nah, I mean, so yeah, the other guys in the band we've got um, we've got Nick Air who plays guitar. He also um, produces the band as well. So we've got our own studio, uh, and Nick kind of together with Marks takes care of all the production. Um, we've got JB who also plays uh, plays guitar, and, and and Andy that plays the drums. Um, so we're a five piece band, and we're pretty much self sufficient, really, in that we. We kind of, yeah, we write and, and record, produce all of our own music ourselves. We manage the band ourselves. You know, we, we, we're pretty much the epitome of DIY, I would say. Right. So wh when did you guys live uh, perform live? When was the last time? <clears throat> we, as a five piece, haven't performed live yet. We've only been together in this form for, what, is it about a year? Yeah, it was just, it was probably about six months before the pandemic that we got together and then that kind of put a stop to it. So yeah, yeah we... previous versions of, because I've had this band like quite a long time really, I guess about 10 years. Mm. Um, so it's it's been through a few different forms and phases. So that, to answer your question, the last gig we played, I think it was 2018, like December, 2018. Right. Yeah. Right. Long time. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk about the band a little bit more later, but can you guys tell me a little bit about your childhood and what's your earliest uh, memory of music? I think for me, like I'm the youngest kid of, of three, so I've got two older brothers and my oldest brother uh, is a drummer. So as a kid and, it, uh, and when he was younger, he was getting into all kinds of music and, and he had the loudest stereo. So anything that was being played, it was being played by him. And uh, I'd always just be listening to whatever he was playing. So he, as a drummer and it, being interested in so many different styles, that kind of formed my interests. And I guess other than that, my parents, they listen to stuff like, uh, I guess, Queen and, and, and some rock stuff like that, even some really corny stuff like 
Cliff Richard. But, uh, but yeah, my, I would say my, my brother is the main influence. And when with his varied interests, that, that sort of, along with like skate culture, that kind of got me into hip hop music, uh, which again, it encompassed all genres, you know, that's kind of what, what drew me to it. it. You know, anything and everything could be part of this music that these guys were making. And again, coming from the middle of England, and where that was coming from, it was completely fresh and alien to everything that I knew. So, uh, but yeah, I guess about, but that, that forms my early or early memories of how I got into music. How about you? Yeah, for me, it was, um, again, like my mum and dad were into quite corny, older rock, like Meatloaf and stuff like that. So that was probably my earliest memories of, <laughs> of music. But um, when I got to school, you know, started through through friends listening to bands like Green Day and No Effects and um like a lot of punk rock and that that really got me in you know into the whole I want to buy a bass and start a band and yeah that's that's where it all sort of started I would say from from the age of about 13 or 14 and yeah I guess we've both never looked back since right like no. you fall in love with music at that age and I think it just stays with you. Right, right. So, Max, tell me a little bit about the hip hop. Uh, you know, the, how because I'm aware of what you know, British, especially Brit pop, because I was a big fan of Brit pop, and you know, we know that there's a lot of rock and roll, even like Black Sabbath and all these bands came from the UK. But hip hop wise, were they actually British hip hop bands? What are the bands? Because I I can't really remember. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I guess because hip hop in, in, in its general sort of marketed form was very American in its sound. So right. anytime a British sort of hip hop act was coming through, it wasn't really heavily promoted, but there was a lot going on because obviously that it was a culture that was really, you know, interesting to many. And plus with England being a, a really quite a multicultural place anyway, um, it was a, a kind of a genre of music that appealed to many people. So it brought, you know, a lot of people together anyway, like in that respect. So there was a lot going on. It just wasn't heavily publicized, but there were, if you were into it, it's like anything. If you, if you look for it, you'll find it. Um, and that's kind of where I was at with it. And uh, there were quite a few bands. There was, there was one band that took on quite a, a, a public enemy type sound early on called Gunshots. And they were, they were a pretty big band. They were quite popular. And you had some other acts like quite early on, like Derek B. Um, I'm trying to think who else. You had a, a, there was a band that was signed, I think it was the first hip hop band that was signed to like Virgin Records or something they were called, The Brotherhood. And, you know, they had a, they had a really, really good sound. And again, it wasn't overly poppy. It wasn't, you know, they weren't trying to sell loads of like dancey corny type records it was still quite an underground true to hip-hop quite a thing i think that's a signature of the uk hip-hop scene is that it always was quite true to how it started whereas america started to go quite r b with things and, and bring in a lot of singers and you know and it became quite a big pop sort of genre in the uk that never really happened and it's it, it has kind of fizzled out in a way but it's still, it's still there in its underground sense. There'll be clubs and bars that play funk and breaks. And, and that's kind of how I came up into the DJ thing, really. Like, I wasn't always a vocalist performer. Like, I'd record tracks at home, like on my sampler, and I'd put down a few vocals, but I never really had the confidence at the time to go out and MC, but I was always the DJ side of things. Again, that's how I got into it. I loved the scratching and, and the actual musical aspects of hip hop, the lyrical content and the relatability of it, I, I wasn't too bothered about because at the end of the day, it was very American and it didn't really mean a lot to me, but as a whole, it was all about the music. And mm. that's, you know, we'll get back to it, I'm sure, but that's kind of what's formed how the band is now. Like, yes, I'm the vocalist, but I view the music as, you know, and in, uh, the biggest part of it and the vocals just sort of add a layer. Right. So you, you mentioned like you were influenced by hip hop and Rich mentioned punk rock. Uh, the, the, the funny thing is that in, in New York back in the day, right, both punk and hip hop were sort of starting at the, like in the same, same 
even in the same neighborhoods right they were having like they were while they were having punk shows they were having hip hop shows like it was it was happening sort of parallel two parallel subcultures right but eventually yeah. those those things actually get mixed up yeah i mean i was going to say like rich and i've got you know i was into the hip hop and he was into the punk rock but like you just said they are very similar like they are very do it yourself like you know punk bands would you know gather in a garage and just make noise and do what they wanted to do and not care about how they you know how were they were perceived by by anyone you know they weren't trying to get fame they were just doing their thing and the, the same with hip hop and the way that started you know it's, it's kind of smash and grab like i'm going to take this loop from this track and i'm going to put a beat on it and it's now going to be my song and i'm going to say what i want on it and uh, but yeah i think that was the appeal for, again that's kind of what got me into punk too and, and and as the skate scene sort of opened my eyes to how mm. these the two genres were actually you know one and the same and being appreciated by more or less the same people that sort of I was allowed to discover more guitar based music and you know and, and not necessarily leave hip hop behind but just see how the two things are linked and how I can sort of integrate my interests and and push forward in in a creative way right so so you as a dj like how how is how did it that transform into having a band like you wanted to have your own band well i guess if you're looking at it in a historically like being a bedroom producer like you're in your room like just like being in a studio you create your own little space you've got your equipment and you you basically just sampling and working and 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 figuring out how to make the sounds you want to make but it's all you're always on your own unless you've got some friends and stuff hanging around like no one's doing anything except you but like it feels quite solitary and over time i got sort of a little bit tired of trying to find samples and you know trying to find things that haven't been used before or that kind of thing so i wanted to start i guess making samples so i've there'd be a friend of mine who played guitar and he could play some nice little jazzy licks or some bluesy sort of riffs and i'd i'd just ask him to come in and 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 play you know and i would literally just sample that chop that up and make music out of original sounds you know and and it's that as that moved along and i started to put vocals on top of it it was just like oh should we go and do this in the studio you know at first I, we were playing beats off of like a cd player or something and the guitarist would just play along and we just sort of not jam but you know sort of rehearse what we were doing and and over time i just sort of thought well let's you know i kind of like this i kind of want to make it a band it feels better to be collaborating with people rather than just being by myself right right i mean mix having that mix of live guitars and and having that you know sort of backing tracks or sort of a sampling happening in the background it actually gives i mean it 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 really gives a different sort of energy right and it it sort of fills all the gaps like uh, on a traditional band right the 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 tracks sort of fill in that gap and i and i think it it makes the songs like feel more whole like I, that's what i feel from a lot of this uh, sort of uh, you know a lot of people who use this type of uh, music guys i want to ask you something so being being from britain where, where were you guys when all this uh, brit pop was happening like you know oasis blur and all this there was a whole era of that right where were you guys back on those on those times i think i was a i was at art college uh, just studying graphic design um but yeah all that was happening you know around the stuff that we were into you know like we'd be lying if there weren't a couple of oasis or blur songs that you know that we like but um i never really was drawn into the hype of it necessarily like again that just the sounds that we were into like that sort of stuff was just i guess in the charts and just doing its thing um but yeah i was i was at college what what, what were you doing while that was going on yeah i would have been yeah i would have been uh towards the end of high school and into college as well when uh, when all that was going on um again i wasn't hugely into it i was more into the punk rock stuff but 
I would have to say, if you put me on the spot, Oasis were a far better band <laughs> than Blur. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they got more of a rock rock band, a bit more sort of a bit more of a pub band, weren't they? That had a bit more appeal to, I <laughs> yeah. guess, those guys. How about you? What, what, then, what did you like about it? Where, where were you at with that? Yeah, because actually, back in those days, I I'm actually originally from Sri Lanka, so I was in Sri Lanka at the time. Yeah, and I was all into it because I had all the posters, all the Oasis, Blur, even like the Spice Girls and all that. I was like really deeply into that. And but one of the bands that I really liked from that, they were not really they were not Britpop, but you know you remember Prodigy. Because oh, I yeah. was you, yeah, I, I really I had all the albums of Prodigy, and I used to have that haircut of Keith, and yeah. I, I was really into that. I, I absolutely love the Prodigy. Like again, coming up as a producer, you know, chopping up sounds, and um, that the Prodigy were always, you know, I wouldn't say they're an influence on our band, but in terms of music and what they've done and what they do. I absolutely mm. love them. Like I've seen them, I don't know, five times or something like that. Like just amazing. Like again, he started off chopping hip hop stuff up, and then he clearly got into punk and and rock and right. just seeing what he's done with their sound. Like yeah, they're they're a massive, amazing band. Right. So R Richard, uh, tell me a little bit about your journey uh, on sort of punk rock side before joining, before coming to the Six Letter. Yeah, so as I said, I I got into the punk rock at school and uh, I had some friends that were into similar music as well. And we literally went and bought guitars and decided we were going to we were going to learn and, and start a band just because we thought it was it was cool and amazing. And we wanted to do that. So that's what we did. We kind of just, yeah, towards the tail end of high school, we um, started rehearsing. We started off just playing cover songs of like, you know, Blink 182 and Alkaline Trio and Goldfinger and stuff like that. And then we started transitioning into writing our own stuff. Um, and then after we left school, we bought a crappy old van that used to be a, used to be a police van. And, and we just started touring. We just decided we were going to we were going to play as many shows as we could in as many different bars, you know, any anywhere we could get a show we played and. We traveled for a few years doing that. And eventually um, we released a couple of records and um, ended up, you know, we ended up on a label and we, we toured Japan, China, all over Europe and, and stuff like that. And at that time as well, Mark, Marks was involved because we knew him through mutual friends and, and uh, he's a graphic designer as well. So we got introduced because you were designing some artwork for us and things. And we thought, you know, what he was doing with the hip hop and that was just so cool as well. And we, we've kind of remained friends for all these years and I've been in various bands since and, and Marx has had various iterations of the sick letter and, and, and has had that go in and some other side projects and it just got to a point a couple of years ago where it just it just made sense for us to come together really right right so so Mark this uh, six letter uh Tell me, tell me why you decided to name the band the Six Letter. Well, when I, like I say, I was a solo guy, and I, I was, you know, I had DJ names um, that were that were alluding to me being a soloist. And so when it all sort of be, started to become more of a band, um, I just wanted to have a, a name that didn't suggest it was just me, because it wasn't just me. I might well be a creative leader, but the whole point behind getting a band is so it's a collaborative thing but the sixth letter simply is it's the for, it's the initial of my dad's name that's all it is so it's the sixth letter of the alphabet mm. and it's it's just a simple nod to family and um you know collective love as it were so it's a mysterious sounding band name but it's it's quite a simple it's it's, it's there's a simple reason why it's called that right right because I was actually sort of searching on that. And so it's the sixth letter is F. And then there is like, there's a different alphabet. It, it says it's wow, something like that. The sixth letter is actually wow. So like, oh, there oh, are wow. all these different, yeah. That's uh, cool. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> that. I'll do that next, the next time I have to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, so uh, when I hear you, like, I saw your latest video. Uh, the, the the sugar nut uh yeah. 
and i don't I, i mean although when you look at it you might you might sort of immediately sort of think oh this is a new metal sort of band but when you listen deeply it's goes beyond new metal although it it looks maybe it just looks new metal but to me i i feel that that funk punk influence i see a little bit of like a metal core sort of influence also there and then of course of course hip hop so how would you how would you guys describe the sound of six letter well yeah i think it, first of all yeah image wise we we've always kind of looked this way so like as as people into music throughout like through that new metal era when things were sort of crossing over the skate the metal the hip hop the punk we've always kind of just maintained a look that that does look like that the influences wise we've come all the way through that too so everything from like you know, like you say a little bit of metal core through like set bands like senses fail who sort of bridge that gap in sort of in metal core punk rock emo we're right. all in that too like we've come up through that um but yeah what what how else would you describe like we just we just blend up what we're into don't we yeah <laughs> it literally is kind of a melting pot of of what we like you know we've got guys that are into thrice and architects and alexis on fire and stuff we've got guys that you know like got uh, that are into quite punky stuff and and hardcore, hardcore yeah. um and then we've got you know hip hop pop and punk rock in there so we kind of yeah it is a, a melting pot of everybody's influences really and I guess, yeah, the easiest way to describe it is probably quite genre bending, really. You know, we are a rock band, but we have got lots of different influences. And I guess we, you know, we try and just, I mean, we don't try and have a particular sound. We just, we just write the songs as, as, as we see them. But I think it does give us quite a distinctive, unique kind of take on it. Yeah. Right, right. I, I, I really love the term genre bending because there are like, there are so many amazing bands like, the the i think the first one comes to mind is beastie boys beastie boys were yeah. like they you can classify them as like any genre right they were punk they were hardcore they were hip hop they were e- even electronic because they later stuff they do a lot of electronic stuff so it's uh, it, yeah there's a so many so many different bands but beastie boys for me is like one of my favorite bands with you know yeah again like being a- hip hop artists at their core you know like same with me like it's 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 finding out that you can actually use anything to create what you want to create and they're a great example you know like not only have they blended various genres into their hip hop that they make but then they'd also go off and they literally play punk rock you know that's like right. how the song you know sabotage came about you know all of a sudden they're on you know a, late night tv show and they're just a punk band and, right. uh, it's just so it's just so cool to see and again a, a huge you know inspiration to just know that you can do what you want as long as it's not badly done i think like it's like with me being so close to the hip hop stuff and then new metal being what it was like i was very con i mean i already look a bit like fred durst like that i can't avoid that So I didn't want to sound like that because it would just it just wouldn't they're great they sound like that I don't want to do that like that's I love them so like when it came to like blending what I do with what we do it was just like trying to create a, I guess like a punk rock version of 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 a rap rock sound you know I'm I'm never not going to do like a rap delivery but as I've progressed you know the other side of my vocals is coming through too so I think that's what makes us unique is is what we blend but also what what we end up sounding like is quite hard to to pin down into into categories or genres and that I'm really quite proud of that to be honest right so so you guys already have uh, two two albums right you have you released two albums and one EP yeah i mean like i said i i started off a long time ago um I basically got signed to a label I don't know like 12 years ago based on the solo stuff I was doing which was predominantly quite sample based so I I think it was like really late MySpace era like I've got tracks on there and um this this label 
got in touch with me and said, you know, oh, we really like a few of these tracks, you know, we'll sign you, like, but you need to make an album. And at that, at that point, you know, I was really into what I was doing, but I was also just starting to get into using uh, people to make music rather than samples. Uh, but we we made we made the record, and as I was, you know, it was as I was signed off, sort of doing like the hip hop thing. So the very first album worries me. That was, you know, again, like I was so happy to be able to to create an album and have it released. So whatever came out was literally just a product of of where I'd been up to that point, and it was like like being in a candy shop. Like all these influences were coming out. It's again like. It, I was trying to cram in quite a lot of things into one record, um, but it ended up it ended up pretty good. And again, it's all self-produced; like there was no studio sort of helping me with it. I'm, you know, really proud. But yeah, various versions of the band that was just before things started becoming more of a a, a band thing. So after that, um, a few, you know, like say a couple of EPs. Um, I think the first time I really started working with somebody solidly was um, an, an old bandmate of Rich's in the in the pop punk days, a guy called Wes. Shout out to Wes. Um, and he and I really started focusing on pushing the, the more guitar-y aspect of what we were doing. We weren't going to turn my back on the hip-hop thing because that was still sort of working as we were still on this label still kind of had to keep a hand in that. So tracks like the Get Up Club and like Box of Sharps, you know, they were still very true to the hip hop thing. And again, I love hip hop. I'll never not love it. So to be able to make it and have a, a platform to put it on, you know, just really excited me. So it kind of kept that sound going. But um, yeah, me and Wes really worked on pushing the, the, the guitar, the band sound of things and, um, yeah, like yeah, that's that's the that's where those records came from, and then from there, like just getting these guys in and, and pushing things further, it's just gotten bigger and bigger sound wise. Right. So so when you look at your the the songs that you do now, what sort of uh, what sort of subject matter you're you're like tackling, or what sort of message you're bringing from your songs? A lot of them are like a lot of them are based on like, it won't be any surprise, you know, interpersonal relationships, whether they're romantic or whether they're professional, just the way we navigate through the world um, and, and how confusing it can be at times. Um, and just I guess being aware of one's mental health and not necessarily having any answers or being a, an expert in, in that respect, but just being aware. I think a lot of the stuff I write, it's quite hard to pin down because it's a lot of different thoughts. It's a lot of different things that are coming in from different angles that I, I just like to portray. Or I ask a lot of questions. I think that's what a lot of what I write is. But in terms of subject matter, I sometimes call what I do somber optimism, which I'm aware of the sadness and, and difficulty that life can put forward. And I've experienced some of it and dealt with it, but that's with a, a, a feeling of optimism, a feeling of, yeah, sometimes things are pretty bad and, and, you know, and you can focus on that. But if there's actually a positive route and somewhere where you can go and something that you've got your eye on, which is keeping you going, then that's that's basically what the focus is. Right, right. Um, so I I really love the term sugar nut. So I I mean, is this something you guys created this ter this term? <laughs> yeah, I guess it is. A, I, I love again being a, a lyricist. Uh, being traditionally a, a rap guy, hip hop guy, I'm always interested on, you know, play on words, you know, sort right. of things that sound one thing, but mean another thing or, you know, that kind of thing. So the term sugar again, it sounds like juggernaut, which is right. a great big lorry that's smashing through everything. And um, I guess I related that term to um, being with a female, you know, some, yeah, they're very sweet, 
but they can also smash right through you with the um, with reckless abandon. Uh, right. And again, the term sugar, you know, being sugar, like it's, a, it's loosely related to blood sugar too. Like it just, they're running through your veins. You can't quite get rid of them. And they're right. smashing your bits at the same time. So it's, that's kind of, that's what that song kind of is about and where that term came from. Just a, a kind of a funny, a funny way of describing a woman. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Richard, can you tell me a little bit about the, the music video of that? Yeah, so um, again, with the music video, we just wanted to really capture the energy of the song because it is quite, a, you know, it's, a, it's an up-tempo, driving kind of song. And we wanted to, yeah, we wanted to just have a video that, that really captured the energy of it. And loosely speaking, um, the, the theme of the song when Marx wrote it, it was loosely based on AI, you know, um, that film Ex Machina where um, mm. the, uh, the, the, the AI is created and then ends up kind of, you know, taking over. That was, that was what you had in mind when you were kind of writing it. Yeah, the third person. loosely, yeah. The, the song, again, it's relationship based. So the AI theme, it's that feeling that, you know, you've been created by somebody or like you've been created by a situation that you're in and then you learn that you can find your way out and you learn, you know, so the AI learns how a human operates and learns how to manipulate its way out and, and basically escape. But, um, but yeah, in the video, we, we, tried to, uh, we tried to get that aspect in with some of those cutaway shots where I'm in front of the glass. Um, a little bit of a mishap occurred. It, 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 on, on the day somebody that was uh, meant to uh, arrive to play the uh, the AI uh, didn't show so we just uh, we just carried on with the theme but at the end of the day like I think a little bit of less is more I think there's a little bit more mystery around what I'm supposed to be looking at in that scene so um, but yeah that's that's the theme of the video just capture the energy we were also keen to just get out and show what we were doing after such a long time being locked up um, we just let loose when we were shooting that and just wanted to make sure that the energy of the song and again, I guess, suggest what was left, you know, next to come was exciting and, and to sort of stay tuned. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think when we filmed the video, it was like, yeah, two years of pent up energy, not playing live and stuff just came out in the video, I guess. So, yeah, yeah it was cool. Right. I know the movie that you guys are talking about, Ex Machina, right? It's, it, it was a very, I mean, it became so scary at the end, right? Like, not scary means like ghost, but like, damn, that, that, that can happen, right? Like, yeah, exactly, right? It definitely could happen. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I love that film. yeah. <clears throat> so uh, I was kind of surprised that you guys also released another single, which is, which was an which is an acoustic version, right? So, yeah, we we were we put out Sugar Nor, and then we've been putting out an acoustic version um, the week after. So yeah, we we we're releasing songs every two weeks since then, and in between that, yeah, an acoustic version of each one. So each song that we've got, acoustic version again. Just I love when bands just have alternate different versions of what they do you know you can you can see their influences and you can just you can feel what they do it's not you know there is a lot of magic that can go on in the studio so it's nice to sort of just strip it back and show the song for exactly what it is and i, I personally love that I, I love that we're doing it with what we're doing yeah definitely i think as especially with like you said earlier with our sound there is a lot of samples and things going on that really layer the songs up and fill the songs out. And I think giving an alternative perspective and just stripping it right back to just an acoustic guitar and a vocal really does show, you know, the roots of the song and gives it a whole different dimension. So as Mark said, at the moment, we're releasing, you know, full band songs. We, we had um, six tracks and we were toying with, you know, do we release them as an EP or do we release them individually? And we just decided like, with the way that um, music is consumed or well, just content in general is consumed now, it's better to kind of space it out and give people something to look forward to and put something new out every week and keeps it interesting for, for the listeners and for ourselves as well, rather than kind of just throwing it all out there. So 
yeah, we're releasing, you know, we've got 12 weeks of basically releasing a track every week now, a, a full band version and then an acoustic version. We've also got some nice little acoustic videos coming out on YouTube as well. And, and, and you know, we've put out the Sugar Nought video and, and we're putting out a new video called Don't Give Up as well, um, which is coming out uh, next week. So that's, yeah, it's, it's exciting to just be able to kind of share the fruits of our labor that we've put in over the lockdown and, and really, you know, keep releasing content and get some momentum going. And it's really nice for us to do it that way. Right. So now that the things are sort of getting back to normal in, in the UK, are you guys looking forward to performing live or any, any plans? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, playing live for us now is kind of the last piece of the jigsaw. We spent two years recording and producing and planning and, um, you know, we're happy now that we're putting out this content and we, you know, we're getting new fans every day, um, which is, you know, brilliant for us. And, and, and we're doing podcasts with people like yourself. So it's really nice for us to be spreading the music out around the world. Um, but for us really, yeah, getting out and playing live is the final piece of the jigsaw and we're, we're looking at trying to get out and, and play as many live shows as we can next year, really. Um, we're going to put out some new music next year as well. We're already working on that at the minute. We've kind of got five tracks that we're working on in the studio. So they'll be released next year and yeah, hopefully lots of live six letter shows as well. Right. Right. So, so guys, what's your message to the viewers of this video? I guess I, we really appreciate anyone that checks us out. Like as as musicians, you know, like we do what we do, we love it, we'll do it regardless. But to have people listen and and to contact us and tell us, you know, what they think of it, that means everything to us. Um, and yeah, keep your heads up and you know, keep on rocking. Right. Anybody you want to shout out to? I don't think so. Not at the moment, have we? No, just anyone that's listening to the music and sharing it. Like you said, we really appreciate it. And, you know, we're, we're a relatively small band, so it really, really helps, you know, everybody that checks us out and shares it and pays an interest. We, we you know, it means the world to us. And, yeah, we interact with everybody that reaches out to us. So, you know, if you like the music, don't be shy, I would say, is the message. Yeah, we're, I'm a huge music nerd. I'm a, I'm a huge fan I'm a fan first and foremost. I'm so lucky to be able to do what I do the right. way that I do it and with who, you know, with the guys that I do it with. Well, yeah, just anyone that listens to us, you know, if they want to you know, give us a holler, then we're all too happy to hear from them. Right. So, so tell everyone how they can, you know, follow you and how they can listen to your music. So yeah, we've got a website. So it's um, the sixth letter dot co dot UK. So it's spelt in the words. So it's no, no numbers. It's all, all letters, the sixth letter, .co.uk. You can link to all our socials from there, but we're on Instagram at the sixth letter band, Facebook slash the sixth letter, and everything's on. Everything we do is on Spotify, Apple Music, Deezer, Amazon, the lot. So we're, anything we've got that is released, you can find it, you know? Right, right. You know, I was I was actually surprised to find out that there are 200 streaming sites in the world, which I don't even I don't even know more than five. <laughs> that's crazy, right? <laughs> yeah, that's all, yeah. Who's on them? Yeah, yeah. Right. we're the same as you. I think it's just the top five, isn't it? That we know. Right, right, right. So, 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 Richard, uh, Max, uh, thanks for joining this. I really enjoy talking to you. And Richard, thanks for reaching out to me on this. And and I I was able to discover you guys from that. And I'm looking forward to your new music and and all the best with your touring and performing live. Uh, I think things will get better, and you will be able to tour also other places. Looking forward to that. Definitely. And thanks. So yeah, thanks a lot for having us. We really, uh, we've really enjoyed it and really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. It's been really good. Really enjoyed it. I love talking about music. I could do it all day, but yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Thanks a lot. All right. Thanks guys. So have a great day ahead. All you right. Too. And you. Peace out. All right.